Meanwhile, India is all set to go back to the moon. The Indian Space Research Organization is leaving no stone unturned to return to the moon with Chandrayaan-3. The tentative launch date is 13th of July. The payload fairing containing the lunar spacecraft has been installed on the LVM-3. The geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle that will launch it to the moon's orbit. After the partial success of Chandrayaan-2 in 2019, ISRO is retrying the mission with improved technology. In an interview with Vyond, Dr. S. Somanath, the chairman of ISRO, explained the new updates installed in this mission. Take a listen. See, this time the orbiter is a propulsion module only. The propulsion part is retained in the orbiter, whereas the uh, instruments and payloads are not removed from that. Not required as it is there in Chandrayaan-2 already. So we could get gain some mass out of it, which is now allocated to the lander part for strengthening the lander, including its power generation capabilities enhanced, its landing legs are strengthened, its impact capabilities improved, uh, its propulsion is made uh, more uh, tolerant to failure, so more propellant is added, as such, and some instruments are newly added. So all this gave some heavy mass to the lander, so that is how we distribute the mass. The Chandrayaan-3 module is going to scale the 384,000-kilometer distance to the moon aboard the LVM-3 rocket. The total payload weighs as staggering as 3,900 kilograms. It is going to be deployed for 14 Earth days or one lunar day. The Chandrayaan-3 mission is comprised of three parts. They are the propulsion module, the lander module and the rover module. The lander is named Vikram after ISRO's founder, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. And the rover is titled Pragyan, which stands for Wisdom in Sanskrit. All three modules are fitted with state-of-the-art Indian technology. These indigenous scientific instruments are, and are important in studying the moon. The propulsion module will take the mission up to 100 kilometers off the moon, after which the lander shall take over and touch down on the lunar surface. The, prop the propulsion module will use its shape instrument to look for smaller exoplanets in reflected light. ISRO believes this will help probe into planets uh, which would qualify for life outside Earth. Once on the surface, both the lander and the rover shall deploy Indian-made indigenous scientific instruments. The lander payload has four instruments which shall do the following. Number one, measure the levels of plasma on the lunar surface. Number two, measure thermal properties of the lunar polar region. And also measure seismicity around the landing site. And lastly, understand the dynamics of the moon system passively. And finally, ISRO will deploy its instruments to aboard the rover. The instruments will analyze the lunar surface and also determine its a uh, minological composition. If a success, India shall join the select group of nations comprising of the US, China and Russia, who put a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. And thus the Indian space research or program is poised to display its strength and competency on the global stage if the mission succeeds. And now we are being joined by correspondent Siddharth MP joining us live from Bengaluru. Hi Siddharth, uh, talk to us about the current status of the mission and when can we expect the launch? Hello Rahesha, to start off let me tell you that uh, the LVM-3 rocket as we speak has been moved to the second launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Kota, Andhra Pradesh which is on India's east coast. This is a, itself is a very significant indicator of the fact that we are just uh, about one week away from the launch of the LVM-3 rocket carrying the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. As far as the status is concerned, for at least the last two months, work has been underway at the spaceport to integrate the LVM-3 rocket, that is to piece together its different stages. There are three stages on board, a solid stage, a liquid stage, and also a cryogenic stage powered by supercooled fuels such as liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So all of them have been put together, one on top of the other. The rocket has been vertically stacked and atop the rocket, also what is known as the payload fairing or heat shield has been placed. The heat shield is a protective cover which protects the satellite or the payload from all the vibration and intense heat that happens during the time of launch. So even within the heat shield, the spacecraft has been placed and then the rocket is now completely ready 
and we are barely one week away from launch. We are given to understand that earlier ISRO had planned for a launch on the afternoon of 13th of July, but now we are given to understand that the revised uh, date is out. Of course, this is not officially announced, but what we are given to understand is that the launch could happen around um, 14.34 hours or 2.34 p.m. on afternoon on Friday, 14th of July. This is, this is the time that we are given to understand and all preparations are underway in full swing at Srihari Kota in line for this particular launch that is planned. Right, Siddharth, uh, like you mentioned, we are barely one week away from uh, the launch. This is also India's second attempt to land on the moon. What has India learned from its first attempt and what are the latest modifications that uh, you can talk about? See, in fact, there were a uh, significant amount of lessons that were learned from what happened with Chandrayaan 2, primarily because of the fact that what happened to Chandrayaan 2 was that we were as close as two kilometers to the lunar surface. So Chandrayaan 2 was just about to make a lunar landing, but barely two kilometers when it was about to touch down from the lunar surface, communication was lost. And then it was later implied and inferred that this was a crash landing that happened and the mission was lost. Only the orbiter from that old mission remains. And that orbiter is still functional. It continues to give science data. It continues to be the highest resolution camera around the moon, um, you know, for several years now. But what we can tell you about uh, the Chandrayaan 3 mission per se is the fact that the lander has been significantly or the composite spacecraft has together been strengthened. So the last time it weighed around 3,600 kilograms, but this time around it weighs 3,900 kilograms, about a 300 kilogram increase in weight. So what this weight increase means, it means larger solar panels on the spacecraft. It means uh, more fuel on board the spacecraft. It means more rugged landing legs. Last time landing was the issue. So this time they've ruggedized the landing legs to ensure that it can withstand slightly more impact even if the need arises. In addition to that, there's been intense testing that's been put together. So what ISRO has done is at the spaceport in Sriharikota, they even created a mini mock-up of the lunar surface. Right. They created a mock-up of how it would be to, you know, um, free fall and land on the moon using its own propulsion systems. So all these kind of intense trials were carried out to ensure that ISRO succeeds this time around because immense lessons were learned because nobody understands space science and technology in one go and nobody masters it in one go. If you see in previous attempts, uh, you know, there were other space agencies that did not succeed. You you can uh, recall that um, the Japanese, uh, uh, you know, private mission known as Hakuto-R did not succeed in, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. Israel's mission known as Bereshit did not succeed. So Chandrayaan-2, of course, had only a partial success. But let's remember the fact that nobody gets it right the first time in space. It's not easy, at least. But Chandrayaan-3 is an attempt to set right what Chandrayaan-2 could not accomplish in 2019. Absolutely, Siddharth. This is also India's ambitious mission to the moon. Like you mentioned that uh, nobody succeeds in the first attempt. But talk to us about how big a landmark will it be for India in its own space program and in the global arena if India succeeds. So to talk about the Indian space program and how big Chandrayaan is for the Indian space program, we have to remember that the space program itself began in the 1960s. So in the late 60s when, uh, you know, America put man on the moon, Neil Armstrong made the moon landing. What happened was that's when India was learning the basics of rocketry, uh, rocketry launching, just sounding rockets or very small rockets to the upper atmosphere. So that's where we began. And today, you know, more than 60 years later, India has the capability to use its own rocket, own spacecraft, own facilities and hardware and infrastructure to ensure that we can get as far, you know, travel 3.84 lakh kilometers and put a spacecraft on the moon and attempt soft landing. That's why it's significant because it shows capability. Also, we have to remember that it's missions like these that inspire the population. One, it inspires the scientific community because, you know, there are people who work on several deep, deep space sciences and advanced fields. So for them, only when you have a mission like this, do they gather adequate data that can help them study in their fields. But at the same time, 